Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today I would like to talk about cheap Roman helmets against good quality Roman helmets. Alright, so I know that quite a few of you like helmets, armors and would like to start collecting um, for your own kind of helmets and armors and, and pieces of equipment. So I wanted to actually make a video that could help you out uh, find the best uh, helmet that you can find as far as Roman helmets are concerned. The first th thing that we should consider is why do you want a helmet? And let's consider three possibilities. The first one, you just want a nice object to display in your, in your home, for example, or on a table. Secondly, you want a helmet that you can use for historical reenactment. Or thirdly, you just want a helmet to be able to spar with your friends. So, let's examine all three. Now, if you want a helmet just to decorate your home, you can buy whatever you want and you can actually buy something very cheap and, uh, and, and get it and just put it there. But if you want to use a helmet for historical reenactment, then it needs to be historically accurate. So, the very first thing and the very two helmets that I am going to compare, that we're going to see together here, are exactly these two kinds. A very cheap helmet that I would definitely tell you not to buy if you want to do a historical reenactment, or even fighting, sparring. And then a medium quality helmet that is actually good because it's historically accurate and can be used for historical reenactment. So these are the two helmets that I would like to compare. This is the cheap helmet. It's supposed to be an Imperial Gallic, but it has a lot of problems, so we'll check that out in a minute. The second helmet is this one here. This is also an Imperial Gallic, and it's historically accurate. And of course it's more expensive, so let's compare these two helmets very quickly. And then I'll wear both, and I'll tell you the prices and where you can find them. So looking at them one next to the other from the front, you can immediately tell that there is a huge difference as far as the height of the helmet is concerned. The helmet on the left is the historically accurate one, and the one on the right, well it's supposed to be a legionary's helmet, imperial legionary's helmet, but helmets of that height would have been auxiliary helmet, and still this would not qualify for an auxiliary helmet either. It's basically a mixture between some pieces of different kinds of imperial Gallic and an auxiliary helmet. Looking at them from the back, you can see that the back plate is completely different. Now the one on the right here is the historically accurate one, the one on the left is absolutely wrong. I mean that back plate just simply doesn't exist. Now looking at them from the side you can immediately see the me enormous difference for the cheek plate, which is larger in the historically accurate one. The top is another part that you can see the difference because in the historically accurate one you actually have, because here you have all the loops and components to add the crest later on. In the historically inaccurate one and cheap helmet there is no such thing, so no crest for you. Another huge difference is inside the cheek plates, as in the historically accurate one you see that you have loops that are used to secure the helmet with a string. In the cheap version there is no such thing, so you basically can't secure the cheek plates to your face. This is why I was telling you that it's not good for sparring either. So it's not just a problem with historical accuracy. My suggestion to you is always stay away from the cheap replicas. Of course, also the medium quality helmet is perhaps not the top and it's probably made through machines, so it's not going to be the best you can get. But it's at least a wearable, really wearable, because they, they tell you they are all wearable, but a helmet that you cannot fasten, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, so at least go for the historically accurate. Now, the historically inaccurate helmets you can find pretty much everywhere. Any lab shop has them, so if you see a helmet that is surprisingly too cheap to be true, then it's fishy. Most likely it's not going to be historically accurate. Instead, there are two sites where you can find historically accurate helmets, and they are Arme or Battle Merchant. So there you can find good helmets, uh, at least Roman helmets I'm talking about, don't even look at the medieval ones, and, uh, and then you can actually find good male armour, uh, actual riveted male armour. So do not look at plate armour there again. For plate and medieval things then it's always better to um, 
find a real armorer producing these th things for you if you have the budget to do so, of course. Even with Roman helmets, to be honest, the best choice would always be a, an armorer who could make these by hand. But of course then the price will increase even more. So for those of you that I really sympathize with, who don't have enough money to, buy, to go to an armorer and have a, a real helmet replica be made for them, then I would say at least wait. If you only have 50 euros at the moment, wait. Wait until you have at least 100, 120, and then spend on a historically accurate Roman helmet. Alright then, it is now, as you know, wearing time. Alright then, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching as always. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Valete.